Okay. All right, so today we are in for a treat. We've got Dave Sippel here with Duke Inspections, and I'm going to turn my phone off so it's not getting dinged. <laughs> but this guy is an expert. He is my go-to guy when I do home inspections for any of my clients. And today I wanted to talk about homes that are older than 30 years and what you should really be expecting. And there's no better person to tell us about that than Dave himself. Well, thanks, Damien. Uh, yeah, I've been doing home inspections full-time since 1999. And... In this business, that makes me <laughs> an old an guy expert. who's been doing it a long time. Um, and I do a lot of older homes uh, in some of the suburbs of Cleveland and also in Lorain County and other parts of Northeast Ohio. So there are some things that a lot of times, especially first time home buyers, are not thinking of that, hey, I want to buy this quaint architectural historic house, let's say. Or in the first time home buyers market, that's in their price range that they can buy a house, let's say in Lakewood or in different parts of Lorain County where you have these hundred year old houses. And not that that's a bad thing, but there are some things that come with that, that sometimes people are not expecting at all because maybe they're used to, they grew up in a house that's a lot newer or when they went off to college, you know, they rented a, a place that was newer. And so they're used to certain things. And now they're buying these houses, finding out, oh, this is a little bit different than I thought. So, Absolutely. So what are some of the common things that you run into with an older home that people should be aware of, maybe not be frightened of, but at least have some knowledge about so when they go into it, they have some good expectations? Well, definitely most home inspectors would tell you that it's electrical. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the house still has the original wiring. You know, you buy a house that was built in 1920, and even though you can't see it, you know, in the walls, uh, between the floors of the house and the ceiling, between the first and second floor, or maybe up in the attic, you have really old wiring. And not that that's bad, and not that you need to rewire the whole house and gut the whole house, but there's some issues that come along with the older wiring that people may not expect. And the first thing is, is that in most cases, none of that wiring is grounded. So if you're going to be putting a computer, let's say you want to set up a home office and you've got your laptop and you've got your phones and you've got your printer and you've got your scanner, you know, you've got all these things, you know, all these modern appliances are designed to be plugged into an outlet that's grounded. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people say, well, you know, it'll still work. I'll use an extension cord or I'll use an adapter and I'll use a power strip. And that's great. Yeah, it works. But you run the risk of the equipment being damaged if it's not plugged into a grounded outlet. Uh, you run the risk of uh, sometimes if there's a lot of lightning in the area or storms and there's a power surge. You know, most surge protectors don't really work if they're plugged into an outlet that's not grounded in the first place. Mm. The other thing that we run into a lot is that, you know, room by room, there's just not that many electric outlets in these older houses. So as I'm walking through the house doing the inspection, I'm pointing out to my client, you know, hey, look at this bedroom. The current owner has like two power strips, extension cords. <laughs> the outlet that's there is overloaded. And so people are used to, you know, in newer buildings, obviously, you might have at least one outlet on every single wall in the room, but not in these older houses. There's a lot of times where there might be just one outlet and so you run the risk of a fire, you run the risk of overheating the wiring because now you're just overloading everything. Uh, you know, you go into a bedroom and, you know, there's a TV, there's, uh, you know, PlayStation, there's a computer, <laughs> there's, you know, we need to charge our phones, we need to charge our tablet. So you'll see these outlets that are just completely overloaded. So that's an issue that a lot of people don't think about. Now, the good news is you don't have to rewire the entire house. You know, if you have one room that you think just is going to need more outlets, you don't necessarily have to spend three or $4,000 to rewire the entire house. But you might find after you move in that you're spending money adding outlets or making sure the outlets are grounded in certain areas. So let me bring up something real quick, too. When it comes to knob and tube, you know, what I've seen a lot of times, and you can tell me if you agree or disagree with this, but on typically the first floor, you might see some rewiring done, but they leave the second floor alone. 
But the only thing that I understand, and I think this is something important to bring up, is when you have knob and tube in the wall, you can't have insulation in those walls. So is that correct when I'm saying that? Right. Yeah. The knob and tube, that's a great point. The knob and tube was designed to be uh, sort of in an environment, not really an open air environment, but um, yeah, not packed, not covered, not sealed up with insulation because it can overheat. So the, the easiest place for home inspectors to find that is up in the attic. And you'll see where these older houses have all the knob and tube wiring. You see it in the attic. And then with good intentions over the years, people have added insulation, but they've covered the knob and tube. And you're not supposed to do that because it can overheat. So that's a really good point. If you're buying an older house and you're budgeting that you're gonna have insulation installed in the walls, uh, you know, you're probably going to have to rewire that or you run the risk of damaging that older wire, which as it gets older, it gets brittle, you know, mm -hmm. it dries out. Um, it's subject to if there's any rodents in the house, like the rodents will nibble on it and chew on it. And then so yeah. you'll see torn and frayed wiring. The other issue that a lot of people don't know is that there are some insurance companies who will not write a policy on a house if it has knob and tube wiring. So especially first time home buyers who haven't been through the process before, you know, I'll get a phone call saying, Hey, can you talk to my insurance agent? And that's, you know, like two days before the closing. And I'll say, well, it doesn't matter what I say. If, yeah. if, if the insurance know. company doesn't want to write the policy, they're not going to write the policy. Now the good news is there's plenty of companies that will write the policy, mm -hmm. but these are things that come up at the last minute that people don't think about. You know, if there's a lot of knob and tube wiring, some insurance companies will not write a policy going forward. Well, and I'm just going to bring up a point real quick for anyone watching, but you have to have your homeowner's insurance paid up front before you go to closing. So what Dave just said, if you're waiting till the very last day or two, you're in trouble in terms of making sure you don't delay your closing. Right. Something else that I'll ask you about, and this has always been my biggest headache, but it seems like every older home was not built like basements are today. So everybody wants to finish their basements, use their basements as an additional living space or storage space. But back in 1920 or even 1940, I don't really believe that people putting basements in the homes were using them as livable space. And it seems like every time I walk into a basement, you've got effervescence on the walls, you've got you know damp floors. And I don't know if you could just share a little information about your opinion or your thoughts on older basements. Well, that's an excellent point. And I, I use this phrase all the time when we're talking about that out at the home, you know, during the home inspection, those houses weren't waterproofed on the day they were built, let alone 80, 90, a hundred years later. So sometimes we do have clients who, you know, they're going to fix up the basement. This part of the basement is going to be the man cave or sometimes a home office or a playroom for the kids. And you can just feel the humidity, you can sometimes smell mm -hmm. the dampness, you get a feel for it. Uh, you know, you go out and buy a house that was built, let's say, 10 years ago, and some of the builders will say, oh, you know, we've got a 10-year guarantee on waterproofing, and they're doing things throughout the construction process to make sure that the basement's waterproof. That wasn't the case. You're exactly right. You know, in 1920, nobody thought anybody was ever going to sit in the basement right. other than maybe to clean the clothes or, you know, just because the house had to have a basement, that's what they did. So sometimes there are some expectations there. Um, in a lot of those older homes, you will see where they've installed waterproofing systems, like mm -hmm. with sump pumps, and you'll see like a vinyl fiberglass type of paneling put up all the way around the walls. And, oh, and those are very effective. I mean, they, they do just sort of wrap the interior walls to help keep the moisture out. Um, but oftentimes, if you have an expectation of a waterproof, dry, totally <laughs> tight basement, then uh -huh. maybe, you know, a 1910 house in the west side of Cleveland isn't going to provide that, you know, right. just because of the age of the house. Oftentimes, too, the, you know, the ceilings aren't quite as high as people would like either. So, <laughs> you know, you've got issues where if you want to do a drop ceiling or you want to finish the ceiling and you know, it doesn't bother me. I'm five, eight. Right. So but if I was a little taller, you can't really put a ceiling in a lot of those basements. So that's a good point too. And sometimes, 
you know, clients do have these ideas, we're going to do this and do that. And you have to remind them that this is not necessarily a, a livable space in some yeah. of the older basements. No, absolutely. Since we're on basements and older homes, another thing that I think a lot of people get paranoid about, and if you can shed some light on this, but asbestos is in a lot of homes under the age of 1950, and it can be in the drywall, it can be around the plumbing, it can be around heating. And I want to see if you could share a little information, especially with those nine by nine tiles that we so often see right. in basements that are older. Right. So home inspectors get caught a little bit um, on this issue because we're not licensed asbestos uh, right. technicians. Like the state of Ohio would require you to have a license to be in this business. So we have to be careful. We have to tell people, you know, this is possibly asbestos or this sure looks like asbestos. You might want to have it tested. So I just kind of want to throw that disclaimer out that no, the expectation good. of a buyer should not be that the home inspector is allowed to certify yes or no on asbestos. But at the same time, common sense tells us. So not to pick on any one particular neighborhood, but like in Cleveland Heights, Shaker Heights, uh, Rocky River areas where these houses have boilers mm -hmm. instead of furnaces, a lot of times the pipes that are in the basement are wrapped with insulation and that insulation very often contains asbestos. Um, in certain areas, depending on the age of the house, um, you know, you're right, the insulation that's up on the wall or the insulation that might be between the ceiling of the basement and the first floor, that can have asbestos. Uh, the floor tiles, for some reason, these nine inch floor tiles, you know, have been found to contain asbestos. Now, the good news is, as long as these materials are intact yeah. and they're not frayed or damaged or like dangling uh, off of the, the water pipes from the boiler, you know, there's no problem. You're in, really in no danger. The big cost, the big expense comes from if you ever decide you want to remove these materials. Yeah. Because depending on what city you're living in, you know, the city might have certain rules. You might have to get a permit. You might, you're going to have to hire experts to come in and remove. Yep. So the good news is, and this comes up a lot, so let's use that example of the boiler or even sometimes on the furnace ductwork in the basement. You'll say, well, hey, this looks like asbestos. It's not super expensive to hire a company to come in and rewrap that uh, material. So let's say it's on the ductwork for the furnace and you want to have that rewrapped. The, the big fancy word that they use is encapsulation. Yep. We're going to encapsulate the uh, material and that way you're, you're safe. You're not breathing in the little fibers. And so as long as nobody's going to tear that off or try to remove it themselves, you know, you're good. Same thing with those floor tiles. So you can put carpet over those floor tiles. You can put other flooring materials over the floor tiles. You would not think, well, hey, I'm going to get somebody to tear this all up and throw it out in the garbage. You can't do that. It's against the law right. in most cases. So that's a good point. Yeah, these older homes, uh, in some areas, you'll see evidence. And again, we're not really allowed to say for sure because unless you hold the license, but you can certainly tell a customer, hey, you know, you're buying a 80 year old house and it looks like all these windows are the original. It is possible that there's lead in the peeling paint or the exposed wood or the flaking paint around window frames, door frames. It is a possibility that there might be a lead issue. But again, in the state of Ohio, who only recently started getting involved in home inspector licensing, you know, we're not allowed to say, yes, this is asbestos, this is lead. All we can do is warn people that maybe they need expert evaluation. Yep. And sometimes that's all you need to do is alert people and then they can take it from there. But the asbestos on the floor tiles and definitely in the insulation is something that comes up all the time. No, oh, perfect. And for you guys out there watching, just make sure that you understand Dave is a wealth of knowledge. We're going to be bringing him back. He's got to go today because obviously he's successful and he's got other appointments <laughs> to attend to. But I, I will to to say work. this. What's that? Yeah, we have to go to work. <laughs> Absolutely. But if you guys would like to see Dave again, feel free to comment below, shoot out some likes, let us know that. And for more free content like this to make you a smarter buyer and even sometimes a smarter seller, depending on if you're going to be doing home inspections up front, feel free to follow us and turn on notifications so you're going to be aware right away when new updates from somebody like Dave is coming out. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Have a good day.